What's up, guys? Welcome back to the channel. Let's get into some exciting comments from Brad Garlinghouse, the CEO of Ripple. As we look into the institutional demand for XRP, XRP, for all things considered, has been one of those cryptos that most consider one of the worst performing assets, but I disagree. I want to look into kind of what Garlinghouse has said, as well as share with you guys these uh, new highlights as we look into institutional demand rising for XRP ETFs. We've seen Bitcoin, we've seen Ethereum, and now we need to talk about XRP because I think this is a very unique use case as we get into a top 10 crypto that I think, quite frankly, is becoming undervalued here in the market. So let's get into it. Let's talk some XRP. Guys, if you are part of that XRP army, uh, let the world know, let YouTube know, hit that like button, hit that subscribe button, and let's get down into it, okay? And also, guys, please remember, not financial advice. Everything we do here on the channel is just my thoughts and expression. Please do your own research and due diligence, okay? And yeah, here we are. So this is how we are closing out the weekend. It is a very, very red day in the cryptocurrency sector. Um, as we look into this even deeper, you can see Bitcoin essentially down almost 2%, Ethereum down almost 1.7%. We've seen a lot of futures dive as well. XRP here down 2.6% and has been a bloody month year, 188 on the last 365 days. But let's not forget um, kind of the overall narrative here where XRP if you look at this upward channel here that we've been forming over the last two and a half plus years, I've been telling you guys here this, um, th these blue lines will converge, okay? And then from there, that's kind of when we have to make our minds up what XRP is going to do. Um, you can see right here that we've been on this upward swing. It's been slow, it's been steady, but it is still present and that's all that matters. XRP right now, if we dive in a little deeper into the last week and month, you can see right here as I zoom in on the charts, we have bounced off this blue line. This is a very strong floor, but now trading below the SMAs, this is where we look right here. And I'm going to circle this one for you guys so we can see in a later video. Will we bounce off from here? I'm sure of it, okay? And that's where I'm going to tell you guys that I've been kind of trading XRP, not swing trading it, but I've been trading it based on the premise that this blue line holds true. And I eventually see XRP getting back above 53 cents, 54 cents even, as we look to continue this upward trend line that I have shown with that dark blue line on your screen, okay? But that's where we stand with the XRP price analysis. Let's get into it. Let's talk about the spotlights uh, coming up from the uh, institutional demand for XRP ETFs. Most notably, 21 shares, Bitwise and Canary Capital file for XRP ETFs, signaling the stronger than ever institutional interest we've had. Gray launch, uh, Grayscale has relaunched XRP Trust and looks to convert multi-asset funds to the, an ETF. And coming out of Ripple's quarter three report, the CME is setting an XRP reference price as bit nominal, a bit nominal uh, plans XRPs in, in a futures launch, okay? And this is where it's, it's perfect to talk about it uh, as we look and highlight uh, the comment from Brad Garlinghouse. The message from the market is clear. Institutional interest in XRP products is stronger than ever. Uh, we've talked about the three bit, um, <clears throat> as we talked about the, the Bitwise, uh, Canary Funds, and 21 Shares just in this morning filing their S1s for XRP ETFs and the gray launch relaunch of the grayscale relaunch of the XRP trust. Okay. So that was all posted back on November 1st by Brad Gardinghouse. But let's talk about this and what this means for XRP. Okay. Uh, this will allow uh, investors to hold uh, cryptocurrency within XRP without actually having them um, directly exposed within holding their keys and, and knowing how to buy crypto on their own. So that's kind of how I sum it up. That's what it, it all stems down to when we talk about this. Um, you look at just becoming a more mainstream investment offering uh, as <clears throat> more kind of trading houses and, and whatnot look to offer XRP to clients, but these clients may in some form or fashion not be privy or, or able to or have the know with all to just buy XRP on their own, but they've heard about it. They want involved. They want some exposure. And this is the only reason why I like the ETFs within crypto. Now, legal clarity has been changing because what we've seen is the ongoing battle still with the SEC. Okay. Is XRP a security? That's kind of been the age old question. I'm sick of hearing it. You guys are sick of hearing it. And I think that as investors, we have to look for more regulatory clarity. The US presidential election is going to be coming to a conclu uh, conclusion here this week. Um, and as we look at this, this is kind of where you look in to the uh, one of the heads at Ripple uh, with that huge donation to Kamala Harris. I don't know if that's jockeying or if that's some kind of, you know, liberal conservative kind of battle uh, within, but I don't see why um, 
that was done. I don't quite frankly understand. I think that by all accounts, if Donald Trump gets elected, we all know that's going to be a boost for crypto, especially within the deregulation, getting rid of Gary Gensler. You can pretty much assume that this uh, onslaught against uh, Ripple will be coming to conclusion if that were to take place. So if you like XRP and you want to get out of the courthouse, I think we know where to put pen to paper on that ballot. OK, but this is something where we look into this kind of regulatory issue. All right. This is something that the SEC's appeal that has recently been done um, has not deferred, deterred, I should say, institutions from getting into XRP products. OK, that's actually went the opposite direction. So whether or not they're betting in their favor uh, for this next presidential election, whether or not they view that this doesn't have anything to do with it. And uh, even if Kamala Harris gets in and, and the, the onslaught continues against Ripple, that won't matter for the future of XRP. OK, um, there's a couple of ways to look at it. Uh, what I see is the start of something very big. If XRP does get an ETF, um, it's not going to be something we've seen with Bitcoin and with Ethereum. Right. It was by the rumor, sell the news. Um, XRP, uh, Bitcoin's been up, but I think even without the Bitcoin ETF, it still would be up uh, to near all time highs. OK, and I think right now we're just in this holding pattern. Personally, I think that what we have to see is kind of what's going on in the overall market, the more macro side of the game. I think that right now it's just a holding pattern waiting for the next step in the timeline, which is what was going to happen with that presidential election. So uh, the recent reports have indicated at least three of the four uh, XRP focused filings were made following the SEC's appeal notice. So that's kind of where the institutions, like I said earlier, they don't care uh, about the regulation. And I think as investors, it's important to understand yeah, XRP is not going up like a meme coin 40, 50, 100% on the day, but it's still something where I think as we trade on a daily basis, it's still going unfazed by what's going on with this regulatory kind of conflict within the SEC. So um, that's kind of what we have. Uh, there's been a lot of XRP products having great third quarter uh, growth. Uh, we've seen a lot of the futures go up with XRP. And uh, unfortunately, it's just the world we're living in right now, trading kind of without any clarity. Okay. We can look at coin market cap. A great kind of metric to follow is the fear and greed index. And that has been oscillating. It's been very volatile. And I think that's something where XRP does not trade like a normal crypto, but it's important to take in consideration its price movements because I do feel like they're all relevant in the grand scheme of things. Because if crypto is going up, we don't want anything um, or any kind of situation where XRP is not trading alongside Bitcoin. It's not running in tandem. And it's kind of just kind of hanging out like we did back in 2022, uh, albeit XRP did see an increase up to uh, close to 80 cents there very briefly. So that's what I have for you guys in this video. Let me know down below in the comments. Do you think we're this close to an XRP ETF? And will you think this is a uh, a boost, a good thing for XRP holders moving forward? I'm Mark. Appreciate you guys watching. Make sure you all follow, like, and subscribe on your way out. We'll see you guys all in the next video. Cheers.